he repeated a lot of the lies that Trump had after he lost. Uh, Senator, um, hmm. Wow. <clears throat> Dear those who munch on this channel, yes, that's you, 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 and you over there. Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to get yourself to invite more people along to the 24-7 Eyes channel. Please get them to subscribe any day between Monday to Sunday before 10 p.m. November 5th. For daily roasts with a political option, an extra room for those wanting Dems on board. There will be gossip, banter, and funny bits to be shared every day as the British outsider Tony delivers non-stop what he's found round from America's political bag. This message will self-destruct and end in three, two, one. This is generally so good. Uh, I'm Bill Hammer, and I've got balls to blow anything off, and I'm super self-important. And uh, Dana Perino, who is, I'm Dana Perino, who scratches? Um, well, the two of them had on John Fetterman, and John Fetterman has been brilliant. He's been one of the people who's been firmly in the uh, Biden campaign, as all of this garbage has been floating around. Uh, Fox News, of course, uh, they don't like to mention Trump and like to put all the attention on Biden to see if there's anything they can smear and just stir everything up. Watch, just watch how they get rinsed, rinsed to repeat by Fetterman. This is so good. It's going to be competitive, but Joe Biden already beat him in Pennsylvania and he's going to do it again. And I'm standing with the, the president and I think you're going to find that a majority of my colleagues in the Senate and our caucus are going to do that. And like I said, I'm not going to throw away a great president after 90 minutes of a debate. You were probably busy yesterday, but you might have been the only, buddy, only person that would have been willing to come on. Shannon Bream from Fox News Sunday. She and her team called everybody they could possibly find to try to come on and defend Joe Biden. They weren't able to do that. And I know that you were with the president all day, so that might not, not, might not have been possible for you. But here's former Representative Tim Ryan. It represents a pretty interesting piece of the Democratic coalition with blue collar <laughs> workers. Watch him here. I'm here in Ohio, like just you can't go to a coffee shop, you can't go to a bar, you can't go to a soccer game where people aren't talking about this uh, in a negative sense. And so that that reality is there. And I think, you know, it's it's important to be loyal. But part of being loyal is being honest. And, and I think we have to be honest to each other of just how difficult of a situation this is. And Senator, when you had your debate, there had already been 700,000 ballots sent in. And so the timing was certainly different as well. So two questions. One, do you, do you concede that? And two, do you wish, if you, had to, if you could go back, do you wish and do you think that the Biden should be as forthcoming as possible about the health challenges that the president has? Uh, well, first, let, let me say that I'm not sure who really gives a shit what, what Tim Ryan thinks about the situation. You know, I know the it says former, former, so he's not really a part of it in that conversation uh, right now. And, and also, in this situation, let's just focus on where we're at. It's going to be a close race here. And now I'm concerned, and I think, you know, I think Trump is about Project 25. What's more about this, and why did he want to run away from that? Uh, it seems like it's it's the kind of election that we have that uh, we have things more to be talking about. That whether these kinds of questions or that. What about Project 25? And it's going to be very close and it's going to be competitive. And I'm proud to stand with Joe Biden. And I'd like to remind everybody here that Biden won and it really was very costly for Fox, you know, after they repeated a lot of the lies that Trump had after he lost. Uh, Senator, um, hmm. Wow. <clears throat> Donald Trump has an opportunity now to run ads repeatedly with Democrats who are opposed to Joe Biden's candidacy. How can you win when that's going to be the story for the next four months? Well, I, I it'd be, he's just going to run a campaign. Joe Biden had a great day and he's going to have a, a strong campaign. 
And I said, a majority of Democrats are going to back him. And you're going to have random people say these kinds of things. I don't know why that's helpful or anything like that. But Joe Biden is the right Democrat right now in this cycle, and he's going to win. But it is going to be very close. And Trump is going to run a strong campaign. I've always said that. I've been saying that same thing for the last three cycles here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you have repeatedly said that all of these people and entities are wrong. And let me go through them. The New York Times editorial board, The Economist, The Ad Atlanta Journal-Constitution, The Boston Globe, Jerry Nadler, Seth Moulton. Let me go to Julian Castro, Tim Ryan, David Axelrod, David oh, Remnick, yes, Richard Haas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yes, know which one you're you. responding to there, Zeke Emanuel. But they, they're they are saying that you should step aside. Um, so, what is your plan of attack moving forward? My These are pretty big names. Is to go out and keep doing their big names, but I'm not. I don't care what those big names think. They're wrong in 2020. They're wrong in 2022 about the red wave. They're wrong in 2024. And go with, come out with me. Watch, watch people react. You make a judgment. You make a judgment. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm going to be, have all these foreign leaders here. I've been in contact with the new British Prime Minister. With the, anyway, I'm so glad this is happening, and he needs to do more of them. President Biden has been on with Morning Joe Scarborough uh, and Mika this morning on MSNBC. And he is biting back. Um, I'd love him to do Fox News next. The more he does of these which are live, the more it's going to send his enemies wild. And the other thing right now uh, that Trump clearly is going to get a peeved with, no one's talking about Trump. It's all President Biden, President Biden, President Biden. And he is hitting home runs. Clearly, there are going to be people that are going to try to take it out of context, try and spin it, uh, try and... Well, last week, they were saying President Biden wasn't speaking. Now he's speaking. They've got something to go with. And of course, they'll be looking for the negativity. Back in the real world, though. ...of the United States and presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden calling in to Morning Joe right now. Good morning, sir. Hey, Mika, I'm more than presumption. I'm going to be the Democratic nominee. <laughs> Uh, you. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Mr. President, that leads uh, to the letter that we just received a few minutes ago. And wow. I, I, I'm curious, there's a part of it where you talk about the fact that you got 14 million votes, 87% of the vote. It was an open process. You only had I made a little quip about nobody talking about Trump. In fact, the focus needs to get right back onto all the things that Trump is up to because it suits uh, Fox News, uh, all the people on Elon Musk's platform, um, anybody in any of the other uh, so-called cable outlets, including News Nation, uh, obviously CNN, who like to clickbait uh, Biden left, right and center, uh, for there be to be no conversation about Trump. And literally, I would say uh, all of those that are trying to start some civil discussion within the Democratic Party, that's not where the focus is. Maybe save that angst for another day. The focus surely should be on making sure that uh, democracy carries on, a dictator doesn't take over, uh, and all the things that we uh, are aware about Trump are highlighted. That, I would think, just as an outsider looking in, should take, well, that should be the number one thing. Never mind all of this in bickering garbage you've been tested for any age-related illnesses pre-parkinson's or anything like that that might explain sort of having a night like that where you couldn't finish sentences <laughs> look um i had before i was feeling so badly before the debate when i came back they, I, they tested me for I thought maybe I had COVID, maybe there was something wrong. I had a, an infection or something. They tested me, they gave me those tests, I was clear. So, but look, I had a bad night. But the fact of the matter is, look at what I'm doing. I mean, let me put it this way. If there was something that was wrong that night, it's not like it comes in, that's one night and it goes away. That's why I've been out, I've been testing myself, been testing everywhere I go, okay. going out and making the case. The night of that debate, I went out. I was out till two o'clock in the morning. That very night, that very night, it drives me nuts, people talking about this. 
that very night I talk in a large crowd. Look at the crowds we've gathered everywhere from Atlanta to North Carolina to Pennsylvania and look yeah. at the enthusiasm. But it was right after. And where the hell's Trump been? What has Trump said or done? Except it's very simple. Know. How can how can you assure the American people that you won't have another night like the one you did in Atlanta? Look at my career. I've not had many of those nights. It was a terrible night, and I, I, I really regret it happened. But the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. how, how can you assure you're going to be on, on you know, faith that can intervene on your way to go to, you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea I'm too old. Created over 15 million jobs, 21 million insured for the ACA, beat Big Pharma, relieved student debts for 5 million people, first black woman in the court. So I, I think I had a significant, a significant run, and that's how I'd measure me. Me measure me what I've done. And by the way, in terms of my neurological capacity, I had a physical, a neurological physical as well in February. It's released. I released all my records, all of them all of them and i have a neurological test every single day try sitting behind this desk and making these decisions you know it. both of you know it they know it i'm not bad at what i do and now it doesn't mean i never make a mistake i do but i'm making those decisions trump trump <laughs> and his and his debate night he's a pathological liar he lied about roe refused to accept the outcome of the election he refused to condemn January 6th, and he says, they claim, he spoke with Putin before he invaded. What the hell are we doing, Joe? What are we doing? This is bizarre. No. How can you assure the American people that you won't have another night like the one you did in Atlanta? Look at my career. I've not had many of those nights. It was a terrible night, and I, I, I really regret it happened. But the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. how, how can you assure you're going to be on, on you know, faith that can intervene on your way to go to, you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea I'm too old. Created over 15 million jobs, 21 million insured for the ACA, beat Big Pharma, relieved student debts for 5 million people, first black woman in the court. So I, I think I had a significant a significant run, and that's how I'd measure me. Measure me what I've done. And by the way, in terms of my neurological capacity, I had a physical, a neurological physical as well in February. It's released. I released all my records, all of them, all of them. And I have a neurological test every single day. Try sitting behind this desk and making these decisions. You know it. Both of you know it. They know it. I'm not bad at what I do. And now, it doesn't mean I never make a mistake. I do. But I'm making those decisions. President Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Biden's president. Biden. President Biden. Let me just run. President Biden. President Biden. President Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Biden's. Biden's. Biden. Biden. Yes, Fox and Fiennes are obsessed with talking about Joe Biden. We watched a whole hour this Sunday of Fox and Friends. They mentioned Trump zero times, but it was Biden, 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 or bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. With Hill Democrats, Politico, in denial, Democrats livid that Biden is digging in. Vox, an ABC interview, Biden charts a course for Dems in an interview, uh, worst case scenario. So what, what I'm pointing at is it's not just the opinion of you two, it seems to be the opinion of the mainstream media, it's the opinion of increasingly of Democratic elected officials, more and more Congress uh, men and women. There's uh, Senator Mark Warner is putting together a coalition of, of senators who might be looking to ask him to call him to step aside. And it's just Hakeem J. And of course, now the scholars that reside within the uh, production or those people who put together uh, Fox and Fiennes have decided to press Project Fear, uh, the nuclear button. Judge for yourself, okay? I'll just put these two clips together. I think the story, more importantly, is about the national security of the United States. Sure. That this man, at this capability, has his finger on the nuclear button. And if this is such a threat, which I believe it to be, to national security... It ran 
the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. And at Fort McHenry, under the rocket's red glare, it had nothing but victory. And when dawn came, their star-spangled banner waved defiant. Let me just say, by the way, with regards to the debate, the worst thing about the debate wasn't uh, President Biden's off night. Uh, Trump's lies were one thing. It was the fact that so-called CNN journalists, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, decided to basically uh, forego any level of, uh, or sacrifice any level of journalistic integrity to ask biased questions and no fact-checking.